Okay, so to find the um, integral of the absolute value of sine of x, remember we need to break this up. Find where the um, where sine of x, where's sine of x uh, positive and where is it negative? Because we have to split up the integral there. So um, the first thing you do is you need to find all the zeros from uh, on your interval. So from negative pi over three to pi over four, sine is equal to zero at x equals to zero. So what that means is that I'm gonna split up this integral into um, from negative pi over three to zero, and then from zero to pi over four. Then remember what you do is, um, and these are both gonna be of sine of x, Okay, but whichever one of these on whichever one of these intervals uh, sine is negative, that one you're going to multiply by a negative. So uh, since sine is negative from negative pi over three to zero, you're going to put add a negative on the outside of that to make it positive, and then this one's going to be positive because it already is positive. Okay, so after we do that, then we can just find the um, the uh, integral like usual. So the antiderivative of sine is negative cosine, and so times that negative is just gonna be positive cosine of x, evaluated from negative pi over three to zero, and then uh, minus cosine of x, because the antiderivative is uh, negative cosine, and then from zero to pi over four. Okay, so then we plug it in. Uh, cosine of zero, that equals to one, minus cosine of negative pi over three, that's one half, so that's this first one, minus cosine of pi over four is root two over two, minus uh, cosine of zero is one. So this is um, one and then plus one is two and then minus one. So this is gonna be three minus root two all over two. And that's it. Okay, so this one at first glance looks incredibly confusing. I mean, how could you possibly find the antiderivative of a product with what we know so far? But there's a little, uh, little work around here. Um, you can rewrite this as, instead of e to the x times five to the x, you can rewrite this as five e all to the x. I mean, this is exactly the same thing, right? And so then, but then you still have the problem that there's this five in here. So if this was just uh, e to the x, that would be fine. But five, hmm. So then you go back to your trusty you know, guess and check method, where you go, well, what if I just leave it alone? What if I just say that 5e to the x is the antiderivative? Well, notice that when you get the derivative of 5e all to the x, when you get the derivative, you would get 5e to the x, and then notice that, so here, this, you have to think of this as any other number. So this is just a number. So when you have an exponential function and you're getting the derivative, remember the derivative is itself multiplied by natural log of that base, which is 5e. Huh, that's interesting. So it's not correct, but but notice that this right here, this uh, this factor, that's just a constant, natural log of 5e. So then you go, hmm, what about if you say your antiderivative is 5e to the x divided by natural log of 5e? This would work perfectly because I would get rid of this extra factor right here. So. Um, 
go ahead and, and test that one out. I'll let you do it for fun. And uh, you'll see that it's that it's exactly correct. Find the derivative of this and you'll see that it's it's exactly this function. Okay, so then um, I'm going to uh, write this slightly differently. I'm going to have 1 over natural log of 5e. E. I'm going to just leave that outside. And then I'm going to plug in the top, so 5e e squared minus 5e e to the 0. And so then this is just equal to um, 25e e squared minus 1. So I just squared this and then minus 1 over a natural log of 5e. E. And that's it. Okay, so we've seen a problem similar to this before. Um, it looks incredibly challenging, but, but there's a workaround here. Um, we don't have the quotient rule. So notice, you know, we don't have many techniques for finding uh, integrals yet. And so there's usually going to be a, uh, a workaround to finding the uh, antiderivative. And in this case, the workaround, remember, is to split this up into three little uh, fractions. And then once you do that, then you can um, you can simplify them. So here, for example, this one, the first one, square root of x over square root of x is just 1 minus 2x over root x. That's 2x to the 1 half. I'm going to leave them as uh, exponents. And then this one is going to be plus x to the negative 1 half, because I'm just going to bring this one upstairs. OK. So then, um, find the antiderivative, right? So the antiderivative of 1 is uh, x, and then minus antiderivative of x to the 1 half is x to the 3 halves and then times 2 thirds, but there's that 2 there already, so I'm going to do 4 thirds. And then plus x to the negative 1 half plus 2 is 1 half, and then times uh, 2. OK, so I'm going from 0 to 1. So this is equal to 1 minus 4 thirds plus 2. I just plugged in 1 into all these. And then minus 0, because all these are just x's. So that's, that's good. And so then just put everything into thirds. So this is 3 thirds minus 4 thirds is negative 1 third. Plus 6 thirds is 5 thirds. OK, so to find this integral, um, we have to figure out where this uh, function, x squared minus 1, is positive and negative. So um, 